first day of uh, December. Let's see something else. That wouldn't be accurate. It's the first day of December 2022. Holy smoke, Rui. I'm Dana Dernford. I'm also known as the nuclear proctologist. Uh, or a bit of a no fault. And you can call in. 709-589-4406. Hope everybody's having a reasonable good day. Except for the nuclear industry, of course. And we have caused a lot of extinctions, the humans have. But somehow the nuclear industry is still out there wrecking the planet. What do you say to the nuclear industry when in 2011 they admitted that the standards for safety that the International Atomic Energy Agency, a.k.a. United Nations, also known as EVIL, is based on benefit. There is no benefit. If there was benefit, then people's homes and businesses and communities wouldn't look like that, right? And so they were talking about natural stuff. It's not actually based on safety. Which brings us to an important poll tonight. Should humanity make Earth's last stand against the ruthless nuclear power plant omnicide industry? This is, it attacks all species, not just huma humans and attacks the species actually more effective. My apologies. Then it does. Humans, humans are at the top of the food chain. Sh uh, so should humanity make Earth's last stand? We're off to a roaring start. We got oodles and oodles to get through of propaganda and deceit and deception and misrepresentation. I want to start off though because I want you to think about that. They admit that there's no such thing as a safe level and that their standards are based on natural, not man-made. And in order to, for the industry to survive, they have to sacrifice all the species and humanity. That's the only way they can survive. I know that might, if you're new to this, it might sound impossible, but uh, once you learn a little tiny bit about nuclear, you will come on board pretty quick. So this was United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of the Atomic Radiation, UNSCLEAR. And this was 2011. Uh, absorb doses to red bone marrow. So you're not worried about potassium or magnesium build up in your body because it's natural. It is not created by nuclear reactors. Nuclear reactors are the foundation for all nuclear. Nothing else can exist without the nuclear reactors, like bombs and waste and everything else. <clears throat> so in the second row was population per in persons, uh, and these are non-evacuated places, average disposition of just gamma and cesium only, not counting all the other gammas, on soil per square meter. So United Nations has made the assertions that the radiation from Fukushima will have no negative health impacts, despite the fact that they admit there is no such thing as a safe level and that their standards are not even based on anthropogenic man-made radiation. Are you with me or not? Are you with me? Okay. So, the average disposition density in the soil for the communities like Fukushima City, you can see is extraordinary, but even 39,000 is just too much. Because <clears throat> it's bioaccumulating. It's not like it's not like a rain cloud came by and, and, and dropped some particles in the rain and then moved on. This was a continuous, non-stop plume. 
Uh, let me give you a better idea. That this is a model from France, and so you can see Japan is the um, emitting the radiation. You see how it circles back, but it's ground zero, so it's going to get the massive doses, right? And so is everybody else on the planet. This is a 16-day model, and if you don't know this model by heart, then you are making a mistake. So. They're only acknowledging a single isotope of cesium, and you can have no doubts that they're downplaying the actual numbers of it. But what they've done for the anniversary, the 10th anniversary, was worldwide the media came out and regurgitated that narrative, UN finds no adverse health effects from Fukushima. Despite the fact there's no way not to have adverse effects, and... There is no such thing as a safe level. And that's out of the horse's own mouth. And United Nations is IAEA. <coughs> but I'd like to um, use each other as controlled opposition instead of someone like myself who has legitimate concerns and documentation to back up my assertions. They don't. They're, their, theirs is based on natural stuff, not man-made, so they don't have any documentation to back up their assertions that there will be no adverse effects to the population, which is absurd. Because a single atom, a single atom is like a Beckwell, and a Beckwell, you can see the numbers. Okay. So again, worldwide, the media came out in 2010 and asserted that there won't be no harms from multiple nuclear meltdowns and fuel pools melting down. And the nuclear industry was happy to oblige them, they're happy to create the genocide, because this affects all species, not just humans. So as you start looking at all these communities, these are communities you refuse to evacuate. And they claim there's no adverse health effects when there's obviously... If you're honest, then you know there's health effects. And so the people are in each of these communities is the second row. And so that's women, children, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, your friends, your neighbors, your future spouses, your community, your people, humans, humans, humans. So instead of blowing them up, you just cover them in radiation and they get sick and liquidate their assets in a hopeless attempt to survive the contamination. And the United Nations, the, the, the darling of the planet, which is just a military industrial complex and a misery machine and the biggest one in history, says no adverse health effects. And forgets to mention that, by the way, it's not based on the actual man-made anthropogenic radiation, it's based on harmless, innocuous, and benign, stupid, everyday pointless background, normal, everything's already acclimated to it through genetic superior selection, but not the man-made. So these are all victims that they left behind because otherwise the nuclear industry would have, that would have been the end of it. So they decided to sacrifice all of them and why they were added to the rest of the planet and all the species and the oceans. And I spent six years documenting the ocean in the Pacific for four to five months at a time. <clears throat> this is an extinction event. You won't find no adverse health effects. They had all the major media come out and regurgitate the narrative, despite the fact that it's impossible for not to have any adverse effects, and they're only acknowledging gamma, not betas, not alphas, not neutrons, not the x-rays, and not all the other gammas. It's an absurd betrayal. It shouldn't be able to happen because you can't have a future with an organization like nuclear on your planet. They're the animosity equivalent of an alien invasion, except they're supposed to be your friends and your families and your loved ones and your neighbors and, and esteemed colleagues at your institutions and government agencies and everywhere else. But they're, they're the... Um, they're the anti-heralds of humanity and the species. Fukushima radiation did not damage the health of the local people, despite the fact that the, it's unequivocal. 
it's unassailable that that's exactly what happened and that their standards are made to deceive you and murder you in increments over time. That's exactly what's happening. Cancer epidemic started in the 70s after all the nuclear testing was underway. And now it's, it's an overdrive. But there's 1,800 illnesses, it's not just cancer from the atomic plague. And they're completely remorseless, ruthless, and uh, they don't have apathy, they don't have uh, the human emotions don't, they don't, <coughs> it's obviously don't understand what the word love is. To take it to the next level, they turn it into dirty bombs and fire it from your different militaries worldwide. And they all came on board. The A 10 Warthog is only fires depleted uranium munitions, fires a ton and a half a minute. These are, each one is a dirty bomb. You're welcome for telling you that now, because you're supposed to know that already. You're, it's your watch, it's your turn to fight back, it's your time, it's your obligation, you're obligated under your Bill of Rights, your Magna Carta, your Constitution, this is your obligation. You are obligated. You are burdened with the knowledge, therefore you are obligated to fight for those who don't know better, who don't understand the difference, to educate those who can make decisions, those who can change the future. It's not acceptable to have a death cult manipulating the entire population with a genocidal, omnicidal agenda, and that's exactly what the nuclear industry has. They're not even their own friends. Nobody's immune from this evilness, this radioactive fallout, and they're aware of that. Don't worry, I'm going, only going to tell you 500 more times. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Can't fax your way out of a meltdown. <laughs> That pretty well says it all. I, I don't even know what to do after that statement. <laughs> James, uh, how do I top that? <laughs> really? <laughs> Japan, who has tons of geothermal, is able to develop the technology to get down deep enough to tap into it, refuses to, to take the moral high ground, instead you take the low ground where there's no, that there's no future if you use nuclear. They've already been through it twice in, in the worst of worst circumstances. So if they're not going to learn from their mistakes, and, and they're supposed to be a technologically astute country, like a leading country, and, and they still chose the way of evil, then we're on the rocky road to hell, aren't we? In a major policy shift, the Kushida Japanese government, who's lost all support, by the way, publicly, and decided, well, got nothing to lose, might as well destroy the country while I'm at it, in a position to do it, is setting out on a program to build new nuclear power reactors to replace the aging one, instead of coming up with solutions like geothermal which can replace all gas, all coal, nuclear plants worldwide. You build it, and then you just switch off one and turn on your free energy. And it's been suppressed and denied and a billion excuses, but they got tons of money. And I'll show you some of those examples coming up to waste on everything but solutions. Solutions are not to be funded worldwide. The administration has made the policy change without answering the many questions. This, this was an editorial who we get sometimes from a certain media in Japan, but not very often. It's, it's, you know, it's very unusual to see any descending opinion. The initiative comes only three months or so after the next 
the latest, greatest prime minister in Japan ordered a debate. Ordered a debate. Think about the way they're framing that. A single person shouldn't have that, these kinds of authorities, by the way. His, his, as a prime minister or president, your job is not... You, you know, you have to be in politics for at least 50 years in order to understand what politics is before you should get that kind of authority. It's like giving a teenager the authority. That's what Shida is. He's like a teenager with incredible authority, monetary and military, and, and the nuclear evil behind him. Without answering questions about the reliance on nuclear energy, it should rethink this rash and reckless move. <clears throat> this is very strong language, believe it or not, in Japan as a descending voice. Um, a major media, I should add, and it should rethink this rash and reckless move. It's not, it is thinking. It's not doing it because there's better options out. There's no better option. It's doing it because there's too many better options. And they don't want to, they want to commit, they want a memorandum of understanding to not look at anything else. Just the de degenerate, stupid nuclear. Despite the trends, Despite the trends clearly showing that you don't have to take that rocky road to stupid. Government envisions. The death cult envisions first building such next generation reactors replace those destined to be decommissioned. And this is a new parlay. This rhetoric showed up yesterday. It would take more than 10 years to build a new disease factory and it could not get a nuclear reactor. This could not be a solution to the energy shortage or soaring fuel prices occurring at the moment. Well, don't put embargoes and, and sanctions against countries that are supplying your commodities and you won't have inflation. You got inflation because the meddling from the despicable United Nations. Which, how many thumbs in the pie do they actually got? A thousand or something different organizations? Including, you know, UNICEF of all things. Military industrial complex creates millions and millions of orphans and then they're in charge of the orphans. Is that a step backwards? That's jumping off a cliff. This can't be the solution of soaring energy costs and soaring fuel prices, energy shortages occurring at the moment at all. And with so many other options on the table, you're not having a debate about that. You're only having a debate about nuclear, so there's no debate. Because the system you got there has shown over the last 11 years that it's pro-nuclear past the point of stupidity. It's Jekyll and Hyde, not Jekyll or Hyde. Continued dependence on nuclear power would raise serious questions concerning safety, economic efficiency, other challenges, which has never went into the brain cells of the administration because only pro-nuclear can survive in that kind of a city environment. The government's plan to rebuild reactors offer few clues to how to tackle such issues they don't have, because <clears throat> what's going on now is you've got a whole lot of countries at the same time claiming they're going to have a nuclear renaissance, but they don't have the manpower. They, they don't have the infrastructure, the support network, the suppliers. The, they don't have the ready-made off-the-shelf material available, and big uh, operations like Fusion are gobbling up all the precious metals and the satellites and rockets and everything else on top of it, right? So the competition for the resources dictates that you can't do what they're claiming they're going to do. It's meant to deny the ability for anything else sensible to exist uh, and at the cost of all species and humanity. They're, they're racing down a mountain on purpose with no brakes. 
The ministry's actions plans drops nuclear policy set after 311. Under the action plan, the Japanese Ministry of Economy, and it's important because of the extinction event that it is set in motion, trade from the radioactive fallout from the reactors and the faking reactors to disarm the population from coming up with solutions. Trade and industry states the construction of new reactors will begin with those replacing retired ones. This is an entirely new narrative, right? That first story and this story. They've never used this narrative. We're going to build a new reactor on the spot, and then we're going to retire, decommission. It takes about 60 years to decommission a reactor properly. You can cheat and poison the whole planet and do it quicker, but that's cheating. Up to 100 years. <coughs> and, um, Japan has a lot of boiling water reactors. But no solution for the... And the reason that's why they're doing it this way because they don't have a solution for the waste. They want the waste to continue to split the atom into the environment. All the fuel pools worldwide are splitting the atoms into the environment. We are, this is Earth's last stand. This is, this is uh, uncontestable. I'll show you. I can show you. the horror of what they got done. In a second, after we get through this story, I just want to make sure it's sitting there. It's hard to appreciate reality, I suppose. <clears throat> You're going to replace, because you don't have a spot to put the nuclear waste, so they can't decommission the reactors. So you're just going to build another reactor alongside the reactor full of waste. So these are idiots. That's the definition of stupid, by the way. It's seeking advanced late water reactors replacement units to get them operating in the 2030s. While well, you're in a crisis right now, and, and as many solutions you can implement to resolve it and save your country, but, but going this route is the guaranteed way to destroy your country. It's the best, most realistic way to destroy your country and where the disarmed population won't understand what's actually happening, is by poisoning them. And it's a hideous poison. It's two billion times more toxic than industrial poison, is what nuclear fallout is. Each come with a price tag of $3.57 billion. First off, history clearly demonstrates, and particularly when it comes to new technology, you ain't going to build a reactor for $3.5 billion. It's simply ludicrous to suggest you are. How can you, your loved ones and friends and families have a future with you in charge? How does that actually work? The action plan also pushes for a system that will effectively extend the life cycle of the brittle reactors beyond the 60-year rule set adopted under 2011, quadruple meltdown with eight fuel pools that melted down. I have to wait until the end of this story, which is right almost right there. And by the way, the, the 60 years rule is going to exclude the 10 years that the reactors have been offline, the 12 years they've been offline. So I can pretend that never happened. But the reactors are going to be brittle from neutron bombardment, gamma shines, x-rays, and everything else. Taking the teeth from the rigorous reactor regulations set in 2013. They only done it because they knew eventually you would give up paying attention, and then they reverse it. That's not evil at all, is it? And once the subcommittee members said the inclusions are akin to ditching the lessons learned from Fukushima, 
um, it's not an accident. They built it on a fault line where you have thousands of earthquakes every year and a 3,000-year legacy of tsunamis. Yeah, and all of them are built in that. those attributes. The action plan also called for a new system to provide grants to local governments promote the use of recycled nuclear fuel, mixed oxide fuel, at facilities in their jurisdiction. So plutonium retrieved from the spent fuel pools, nuclear fuel from across Japan will be recycled as fuel for use at nuclear power plants. First off, they've been trying to build a reprocessing facility. It was pushed back 26 times. 26 times it didn't meet its deadline. 26 times. And around 14 trillion yen, which is $138 billion Canadian or $102 billion US. And, and are far from from uh, actually getting something that would... What they're doing is, what you're talking about is uh, mixed oxide fuel reclaiming the uranium plutonium, which is, uh, creates an... Up, it's, it's banned in Canada and the United States because it creates such a nuclear fallout. Scumbag France and the United Kingdom does it. The La Hague, just, they have several, but just La Hague in France... Uh, have 500 security guards. Another big heading for the central government is securing the final disposal site for the highly radioactive nuclear waste that is still splitting the atom in the environment with no containment. This, this is a, a purposely extermination event. It's all countries with nuclear doing the same thing. Everything is vented constantly. Two small municipalities in Hokkaido have shown an interest in hosting such a storage facility in exchange for good money, a.k.a. grants. The opposite of what a human should be doing, isn't it? And no other government in Japan has come forward as a potential final disposal site. And the ministry's action plans, because they want to put it in the community with consent rather than somewhere where it's not going to be an instant issue. Everything has to be surrounded by farms to remove the radiation on a constantly... The, the whole story is just a friggin' nightmare. It only got this way because the world sits in silence. And I mean that wholeheartedly. There's, there's a million people can do a better job than I do. And no other local government in Japan has come forward as potential final disposal sites. The ministry's actions did not list any specific proposal to resolve the issues and merely said the state should boast their effort to gain the understanding. So they should propagandize the population and tell the population, like, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> mm. So, first off, <sighs> My apologies. First off, all of these people are pretending they're in a building that don't exist. And there's idiots out there, and here's some of them. There's an uh, endless slew of them, right? So we launched research expeditions to find out if there was damage to the coastline. Me and my trusty sidekick, Zoe. And year after year, for six years, we went up and done species counts. As you can see to your left, it's, it's very difficult to walk on a typical beach without stepping on life at low tide. It's probably impossible, and the whole coast was like that. And people used to accuse me of taking up 45-gallon drums in chat rooms and, co and comments all over YouTube when I was on the ocean for four or five months a year, Accused me of taking up 45 gallon drums of bleach and killing all the species and then taking pictures and pretending uh, that the species were gone. 
because every rock was covered and everything was covered in species. And so this, is, this, this was their version that I would go into the tidal zones, kill all the species, and then take pictures and say, look what the nuclear industry is doing. And I mean, this was hundreds of times. Because every rock should be covered in just thousands and thousands of species. It's incredible diversity. And in the tidal zones was over 600 or 700 algae, kelps, and in that was 6,500 known species of invertebrates without the backbones, like little shrimp, exterminated. So when birds were coming along the coastline, following their migratory species, they can duck in and hang out in these sheltered areas and, and have smorgasbords. And this is what they used to do, right? And they would catch the next migratory run heading the rest of the distance. But now they can fly the whole coastline. They show up emaciated by the millions, and that's exactly what was happening. You can find all of those pictures, download them, print them out, and, and start having a conversation. Uranium 2.0. Now, he never wrote the story. There's zero possibility he's that smart to lie, that pers persistent. Nuclear green narrative is intensifying. The, no, the nuclear desperation is intensifying. Energy security was already here. And so in February, Russia allegedly invaded, for no reason, Ukraine. United Nations instantly was able to coerce 195 slave countries into putting embargoes against the only commodity they had access to causing instant inflations. Russia just sold the fuel to somebody else. No inflation in Russia. And the people that done it is not worried about the price of gas or the price of groceries or the price of a house or anything else. You are being socially engineered, and that's exactly what social engineering is. The root cause of the interest in nuclear power, the root cause of the interest in nuclear power and renewables in general, you can't conflate nu renewables and nuclear. That's just actually evil. That's insidious to put them in the same sentence. It's Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which caused the inflation by the embargoes by countries that have been under the spell of the military-industrial complex, according to Eisenhower, and the New World Order, according to George W. Bush, called United Nations. See, it's not very difficult. <laughs> Shifting the world's energy landscape without, without referendums, without votes in the 195 countries, just... United Nation twirls his little wand and everybody wakes up the next day to double the price of commodities in their country and it never stops. After coming out of the scamdemic, which bankrupted millions and millions of companies in North America, the small ones, and then that work, that load was picked up by like Amazon and all the big industrial complexes, uh, Lap dogs. European Union government continues to warn of a gas emergency with the EU cut off. EU is not cut off from Russia. EU put embargoes against the Russia gas. So they changed this narrative in increments. And in the last two months, they, they put their foot to the floor. And now all of a sudden, the propaganda has gone into desperation mode. Particularly... Just before Constipated Party, Conference of Parties 27, we've seen this switching of the narrative promoting nuclear. And, of course, nuclear showed up for the first time. The degenerate betrayal is almost complete, right? But if you look at my research expeditions, and that don't, that don't get your ass in gear, you need to get... You need to get it in gear. You need to go over to my playlist and start getting educated. Obviously, you don't know much about this topic. And I have a playlist will motivate you, hopefully. In this report, the latest in our uranium series includes uranium explained. Uranium explained. How many times have we covered that headline, I wonder? Nuclear energy, uranium moving into the mainstream. These are nonsense. 
uh, right? So, between 2020 and 2026, there's going to be 4,800 gigawatts of new renewables coming online. That's the animosity equivalent of all gas, oil, coal, nuclear plants combined worldwide in just six years with renewables. And case in point was, which is also equal to 5,500 nuclear plants, by the way. And so in the last two years, 24 months, there was 550 gigawatts came online and several, uh, three or four gigawatts of nuclear. But the 550 gigawatts of nuclear is equal to 630 large nuclear power plants coming online in 24 months. They can't build one for a decade. And you don't want that on your planet. It should never exist. It only exists because the entire legacy of the industry is predicated upon deceit and deception and misrepresentation and everything else. Oh, we got Stephen calling in from Las Vegas. Oh, my friend, are you going live? You're kind of too late now. <laughs> you're you're live. Yeah. Hi, Stephen. I got a, a very interesting email today from a company called Nevada Energy. That's who supplies our electricity here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. I usually don't even bother to open them because it's usually just saying they're going to raise the electricity rates. Sure. And I've got, I've got solar panels, so I don't have to worry about Oh, that's that. right, too. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. There are new ones, too, right? So amazing. I happened to open this email today, and I thought it was interesting enough to call you and let you know about it. Awesome. It starts off with uh, talking about, in the past several summers, they've shown that extreme uh, western region heat waves are coming the new normal. Well, I can, I've been in Las Vegas for 55 years. I moved here when I was 15. Yeah. Excellent. And believe me, this was like the coolest summer we've ever had. Wow. I can remember summers where it got into 100 degrees by April and then get down to the double digits yeah. until October. Yeah, exactly. But Go ahead. Three million people here. <laughs> it's amazing. When I first moved here, there was like a hundred thousand. Wow. So, so anyway, I'm reading this email. And go, let me read a little bit of this to you. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna just blow your mind. I think I was thinking maybe someone from Nevada Energy was watching your show because yesterday we filed a plan with the Public Utilities Commission of Nevada regarding their approval to advance Nevada's energy independence by reducing our uh, reliance on the open energy market. And guess what they're going to do? I'm afraid to ask, Stephen. <laughs> well, they're going to they're gonna go to geothermal. Wow. <laughs> Holy smoke a eh? That's not an it accident. Says, uh, they're going to use renewable energy development by using the, the great geothermal resources we have in our state. <laughs> About time, isn't it? Really? I, almost, I almost fell out of my wheelchair. Yeah, I know, I, <laughs> well, I mean, like you just shocked me. That's for sure. And I, I can use that too, right, to uh, bludgeon opposition now too, right? So that's that Las Vegas is switching yeah. to geothermal. That's a that's a great big stick for someone that? like me. That's amazing. This plan will help ensure we have enough energy to meet the high demand on hot summer days. <laughs> oh, geothermal is fantastic. I, I read this and I go, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, that just is like a shocker, isn't it? So maybe, maybe someone from Nevada Energy watched your show. <laughs> I wouldn't. I well. I'm the only show out there on, when it comes to energy, right? That's honest. I'm kind of over-honest, but uh, that's, that, I've always been that way. There's nothing I can do about it, and that probably makes it work, I suppose. Yeah, no, that's fantastic well, news. I look I, forward to getting my hands on that headline. When I read the, the public utility yesterday, they filed a petition with a plan with the Public Utilities Commission 
And then they say they're going to use geothermal. <laughs> I almost, well, like I said, I almost fell out of my wheelchair. Yeah, no, that's fantastic news, Steve. And it's good to hear your voice is pretty strong again. And for people who are not aware that Stephen was really sick for a very long time now, and it's just the last month or so that his voice is, has that the fluidity, that, that strength. And, I mean, he's still not healthy, but at least your faculties, right, are are uh, firing now so, properly. I'm playing uh, the Ombre syndrome. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, like... I know you're not healthy, am, right? Yeah. I am very, very slowly getting better, so that's a good thing. Yeah, it's a long way to go. But I saw this today. Normally, normally when I get an email from them, it's just saying they're going to raise the rate. Right. And which only doesn't affect me because I have solar panels. Which, which is really, uh, yeah, that must make so you smile constantly because. Yeah, and, and I go, oh, click it. I'll look at this today and see what, what they want. You know? No, it was fantastic. Cause you could, I'm it? looking forward to reading <laughs> about it. I'll be looking it up tonight after the show, hopefully. Yeah, no, that's great news, Steve. When I read the old promo, like I said, I, I just... <laughs> no, that's amazing, because that, you normally don't look at it, and you happen to click it open, and it's right in line. And it won't surprise me at all that... Like, I, I know from talking to a lot of these people over the years that they, they do turn to someone like me because there's no one else, there's no competition for facts to have the other narrative because they don't understand when you're, when you're stuffed with the one narrative all the time and you come across someone like me, they're like, what the hell did I... Like he's, I he, thought uh, they were gonna, I was going to read something like, oh, they're going to develop uh, nuclear... Gonna, yeah, that's what I thought. When you when you call when you start talking about it, I thought you were going. To That's why I said I was afraid to ask because I was thinking Nevada, right? You know, that has such a horrific legacy from the nuclear industry. It, it and then all of a sudden, you hear the word geothermal in a place where it actually will work, and that'll set the precedence for the rest of the country too. See, because. Nevada likes to brag. There's a lot of tourists coming through. The geothermal now, that kind of, uh, that will spread out. See, that kind of uh, hope is, I guess, the only thing we can really call it, right? The nuclear industry is panicking. Nevada has a shitloads of geothermal power plants. Oh, it does. No, it's perfect. It's a perfect spot. Anywhere where there's deserts, you're in a perfect spot. It's so dry and hot, right? Okay, my friend. Uh, yeah. We got lots to get through. Anything else you want to throw to Stephen? Everybody's saying no, hi. Just, Everybody's I, I saying. Call you and let me know about this because I, I read geothermal. I almost, like I said, I almost fell out of my wheelchair. Lots of people were giving you shoutouts. I noticed in the comments section. And uh, so pretty awesome. Good stuff, my friend. Hugs for you, Stephen. It's good to All hear right, from you. Up. You have a great night. Thank you for that. I can't wait to find out about it. I'll be looking it up. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, Nevada Energy. Nevada? Not the geothermal. Oh, I'll find it. <laughs> I'm all over it. Trust me. All right. Hug my friend. Thank you. Bye bye, Stephen. I'm telling you about that. Yeah, bye bye. I'm always worried that I'm going to cut somebody off who, who might have had something else to say. And, I, and once in a while it happens to me. Nothing I can do about it. You know, I got a long show each night that I do. And so the phone calls are awesome. They break up the show for me. But I, I never lose track of how much work it takes to put the show together and that you got all this information to get through. And um, you can call into the show, same as Stephen, at 709-589-4406 if you can text me at that number. I can read it out for you. Let's keep it rolling. That's great news. I'm looking forward to finding that kind of stuff. It might not show up in the media for quite a few days because the media is... Uh, 
under control of a entity that has nothing but bad fate for humanity and the eight million visible species. We highlight how the current environment has the world embracing nuclear energy. No, the world's not embracing nuclear energy. It's a total fabrication. Expect nuclear to be a climate change solution. Uh, this is marching orders from Klaus Schwab, right? We covered this kind of narrative detail. Like, you really got to be in the know to... I'll just get through the rest of this. You really got to be in the know to write an article like this. You got to be incredibly astute in the deceit and the deception on top of it. And that's not everybody's forte by any means. It's mine accidentally, and now it's it's very clear. I'm able to articulate it each day constantly in all the stories. Right, So it's obviously that the stories are written by the lobbying group and then the media prints it and puts their name on it. We expect, because it's such a complicated subject, you can't just go to Wikipedia or any of the International Energy Agency sites or whatever and be able to regurgitate the narrative with the eloquence by just being a low-life journalist, right? I put most journalists down with pedophiles they're, they're below them, right? We expect nuclear to be, well, because we cover them all day, every day, and lies is why I do that. I say that. I, I can back that up with just years and years and years of covering the unbelievable abuse of deceit and propaganda and misrepresentation and dishonesty. Expect nuclear to be a climate change solution. Well, it can't be a climate change solution. That's what nu nuclear is, climate change. It can't be the solution. Nuclear is cancer also. It can't be the solution, see? I'll give you an example of that. Because otherwise it's not real if I don't provide everything. I'm not allowed to do a radio show. This plume is based on 20 days, less than 20 days, of radioactive fallout. The accident happened on the 11th, which pushed us 20 days later, but the meltdowns took a few days, right? So this is less than 20 days of radioactive continuous plume covering the entire planet. Gas, oil, and coal doesn't have these attributes at all, see? By the way, you can't have a planet without carbon. You can't even live without carbon. We expect nuclear to be a climate change solution. Oh. i got to get back up to wherever that was. So sometimes if I click the mouse the wrong way, it'll take the, the, what I'm covering and it'll drop it down to the bottom. Somewhere around here, they're the same color, so I just copy paste it back up. Shifting the world's energy landscape. Shifting, so they're trying to say that the world's gonna switch to nuclear. European Union governments continue to warn of a gas emergency, but that's because of the embargo. We already covered that. Oh, that's where we left off right there. With the European energy crisis, because of the embargo, self-inflicted energy crisis, like 195 countries from the UN, 30 from NATO, and the other ones that were gold enough to get sucked into it, in terms of the perceived risk with nuclear energy, the industry has implemented safe and technology-proven methods to transport, store, and dispose of nuclear waste. This is bald-faced. I, I, like, I, I can say conjecture, but it's not as bald-faced laws. It's a complete dishonest uh, assessment of the reality. It's completely dishonest. Most operational expenses are set or hedged against inflation after, again, this is nonsense. Green energy transition ready and for a nuclear boost. Green energy transition and then needs a nuclear boost. No, it needs geothermal, which was in such an awesome call from Stephen. Because every time I hear something good, it, it impacts me because we don't get a lot of good news, unfortunately, right? Conversation about nuclear disease factories, also known as nuclear power, as a tool to address climate change, continues to gain false steam. 
orchestrated uh, support is not any is not a grassroots support. The world is not crying out for nuclear. The world is crying out for renewables, and renewables have responded. According to the International Energy Agency, fate price control, which is under the United Nations, by the way, the world to meet. For the world to meet net zero goals, the nuclear sector must double in size over the next two decades. Net zero scenario. That's not true. That's taken out of context from what was said in 2020. Right. I can't believe I actually found it. It's been a while since we dug it up. Nuclear power advocates quote erroneous summary of the UN report on climate change. Nuclear power is not a technical necessity, but a matter of choice, is what was said. And that the explanation from nuclear power scholars, <laughs> don't even get me started, and others in claiming that the uh, inter intergovernmental panel on climate change recommended an increase in disease factories known as nuclear power plants, or that the special report concluded increase in nuclear power to be the only way to respond to the climate crisis are contrary to the actual facts. In other words, it's a total misrepresentation of what that 2020 uh, report actually represented. It was a complete dishonest and disingenuous La 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 la. There's a star man. I like to. Okay, so. You gotta tell the story, you gotta tell the story, right? Huge container. Let me make that a bit smaller. Well, like. Hang on. How about I don't screw this up? Huge container ships are the biggest problem is emissions. So these container ships, one container ship is equal to 50 million cars. And 15 of them are equal to all the cars on the planet. So 15 of the big ships, there's 90,000 of them on the ocean at any given time, is equal to 42 trillion people in automotive emissions each day just from the industry, which is exempt, by the way, um, from sustainable development and then the rest of the hoo-hai that they dreamed up in order to trap you and, and wreck your future. It's on purpose. The, the deceit and dishonesty is actually on purpose. Recent policy may help as the Inflation Reduction Act is predicted increased investments in uranium is predicted, predicted. Strengthening nuclear energy as a climate solution, which is, it is climate change. It's pulsing energy every second, almost at the speed of light. It's emitting it from a thousand fuel pools and everything else and endless dumps and all the national laboratories are hemorrhaging it since the 40s and 50s. It's been dumped in all the lakes and rivers and estuaries and streams and oceans by endless countries, multiple meltdowns. This stuff, all of it is accumulative. It never goes away. It's all pulsing energy every day. And so the stuff that's coming out of the fuel pools each day is multiple reactors in the fuel pool still splitting the atoms. That's, there's no containment. It's vented up to tall, skinny stacks. That's accumulative each day. We are at that tipping point. 
This is Earth's last stand. Period. And the research I showed you earlier quantifies those assertions. Should humanity make Earth's last stand against the despicable, disgusting, coward, ruthless nuclear power plant, omnicide industry, disease factories? Yeah. This is Earth's last stand. Planet Earth's last stand. There wasn't enough room to put the word planet there. You only got a hundred characters. It's okay. The bill provides six hundred million to the Halo program for mixed oxide fuel, which is supposed to be illegal in America and the US and Canada. A hundred million of it is for developing the transport. And so the small modular reactor fable is dependent upon this fuel, which they can only get from Russia, but they're refusing to put an embargo against, but they got an embargo against all the other commodities. Again, this is the manufactured consent routine, right? And it's, 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 it's so evil, it's, it's a genocide machine, and by proxy an omnicide machine, because... No, nothing's safe from this. Everything with replicating cells is uh, incredibly vulnerable to just tiny amounts of it. And tiny amounts of it was in the 40s. It's, it's accumulative, and they've been releasing it through all the nuclear, what they call nuclear testing, were nuclear wars. Classification that should improve investors' confidence in uranium. Again, you got to be extremely astute to write an article like this. This is the last part of it. In July 2022, the European Parliament didn't object. Didn't object. Actually, they did. The vote was 516 to 500 for nuclear energy to be classified as a green energy. So they did object to it. But who's going to know those little nuances, see? To the Commission's Taxonomy Complementary Delegated Act, which therefore will in fact start in January 2023 with nuclear energy classified instead of as disease factors, but as green energy on par with renewables when it has none of the attributes. And it's a cowardly thing to do. And that was the, at the hand of the degenerate nuclear industry. Speaking of which... The Nuclear Energy Agency, a constipated parties, Conference of Parties 27, advanced nuclear technologies offering a pathway to net zero when that's ludicrous. And looking and looking sorry, look in the background, Adams for Climate. Who do, and who's who's Adams for Climate? That's United Nations IAEA. Who's the uh, International Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, that's United Nations? told us to cut emissions by nearly half by 2030. Small modular reactors, which is not a solution because they don't actually exist. Nuclear Energy Agency attending the 27 Conference of Parties, when normally they're like vampires, they hid away for the last 26 years, but now they're, they're front and center with their bizarre atoms for climate boot. This is the first time they've ever done it. Pavilion. Saying clean hyd hydrogen is not clean. The infrastructure in order to have hydrogen is absurd. You're probably hearing the wind in the background. Uh, it's howling here. We got the tail end of another hurricane. It's probably blown 90 to 100 in gust. Assistant Secretary of Nuclear Energy, Colin, includes nuclear hydrogen. Uh, so if you're making hydrogen from the most polluted resource in history, you can't call it clean. And then the infrastructure for hydrogen to work doesn't exist on the tiny amounts because it's such a difficult, it leaches from the containments, from the tanks itself. It's an absolute fable. It's, it's a fish hook to try to keep the nuclear industry alive, basically. 
panel convened a broad range in industry and sustainable energy scumbags. Oh, and so you got um, Dow Chemical, of course. The U.S. Department of Energy. Uh, the Office of Nuclear Energy. Uh, Christy Gog uh, Gogan, who who's a, a despicable lobbyist for the nuclear industry. The discussion at uh, Pavilion at the IAEA's first time in twenty seven years having a pavilion at their at their owners, the UN. You know, 27 years with no solutions. But 27 years of social engineering is what all it really is, see? The huge potential of small module reactors. Well, there's no potential when they don't exist. You can't quantify the assertion when it doesn't exist. It's completely speculative. It's an incredible, deceitful, dishonest deception to suggest that it's some kind of solution. It's, it's like saying we're going to go up in space with a big rope and we're going to ton tow the sun farther away from Earth so it cools down. It's the exact same thing. You're saying something that don't exist and won't exist because renewables are curb stomping it on a spectacular margin. Last year was 291 gigawatts of renewables, but only 0 0.4 of nuclear gigawatts. It was f 500 times more in renewable than nuclear came online. And in renewable, 291 gigawatts is equal to 333 large nuclear power plants. And so they scuttled storage to delay it, but you don't need storage if you use dim and geothermal. So you would use wind and solar maybe as backup to geothermal and for, um, for so-called peak power when people got industry and everybody else is at their peak, right? But So they call it carbon-free. Of course, it's the most resource-intensive thing on the planet. They call it carbon-free because they don't want the species to survive because you can survive if the species survive. So if they attack carbon, which is your friend, and everything there is made of carbon on top of that. And everybody and all the species. You can't have... There's no carbon, there's no plants, there's no animals, no trees, there's no insects. It's a nuclear wasteland. It's just going to be a wasteland. This is what they're headed for. Nuclear energy has been assigned a major role. Nuclear time to pull out the stops. These are all indicative of desperation. Right? This is uh, desperation and posturing is all we're seeing. We're not seeing any... any um, Particularly this year, we're not seeing, we're, we're getting all the red rig, but it's like walking past a house with a dog on a leash with a 12-foot fence barking at you. It's, that's all it's doing. And this is all we see with the nuclear industry. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, creepy dogs in the nuclear industry, two-legged dogs. But the strategy will fail unless the government supports and enables the delivery, again, of small modular reactors. They're basing their whole renaissance on something that don't exist. They don't, right, they, they don't have the manpower to build something that don't exist. They don't have the infrastructure to supply the, the, the material for something that it exists. And every one of these, like, so as we'll see in the United Kingdom nuclear power plant that they're tooling around with, is the best way to explain it, is the biggest project in human history anywhere on the planet. And it's a revolting disease factory if you actually get it to work. And it's surrounded by farms. And the minute they put fuel in the pools, it's going to hemorrhage radiation and invisible snowstorm. And that farm product is going to give you up to 1,800 illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries. You can pretend that it's not, but that's exactly what's going to happen. It's not even safe now to go to a supermarket. Nuclear energy has been assigned a major role in UK energy strategy. It's not a major role. You're, you're building a couple of gigawatts 
of renewable, of nuclear. In order for them to have a future, they need around 400 gigawatts, right? And they're only building enough to maintain their weapons. But the strategy will, because you need tritium every 12 years for each weapon, right? And a lot of it. And tritium makes the weapons twice as powerful, but it's harmless if it gets inside of you. Dana, shut up, murderer. But the strategy will fail unless the government supports and enables it. If they can support it and enable it, they are. It ain't going to make any difference. You can't, you can't base your future on something that don't exist. That's called schizophrenia. That's called stupid. That's called leaving everybody vulnerable who's paying for it. So people don't really care. Let's put something there that will work. And so this lot took over that facet of uh, energy and will only willing to look at nuclear, which they know they can't produce. They can't produce it. Despite how many lap dogs they got trying. Alongside a faster construction of large reactors. You can't you can't speed up a large reactor. They're too complicated. There's two you know, it's four or five years to train the workers to be proficient at that job on top of that. And that era is long past, past in the seventies. In April 2022, the UK government set its ambitions to quadruple the UK nuclear power generating capacity to 24 watts. There's 291 watts came online in 12 months last year, 260 the year before. And by 2026, the whole world will, will be in overdrive producing renewables and, and geothermal will have its day really soon. And then it's all over for the, the mass genocide. And uh, Lidere is a senior consultant, who him and the other guy wrote this article, in Mott McDonald's nuclear business. So they have an incredible incentive to lie to you and the platform to do it and the media to regurgitate it and the lobbyists to persuade useful idiots in Parliament and everywhere else to participate in it, despite the fact it can't come to fruition because the odds are now stacked against it. And the second that you admit that nuclear is a failed industry, y you can think about your grandchildren and having a future. But until then, not even a butterfly has a future. The nuclear industry is revoltingly efficient at extermination. And this is Earth's last stand. Which is why you see me censored so much tonight, 23 concurrent people. Should humanity make Earth's last stand against the ruthless nuclear power plant omnicide industry? Yes. It, it, its hand is officially forced at this stage, right? Former Prime Minister Monster, former prime monster, Boris the, the despicable Johnson, the revolting mass murderer Johnson, who lifted all restrictions from Japan's nuclear wasteland and, and filled up the supermarkets. But don't worry about it. That was a couple of months ago, but don't worry about that. He lifted all the restrictions for baby food and children's cereal a couple of years ago. Think about how evil you actually got to be to do something like that. That's purpose genocide. And should, he should be arrested and prosecuted for that. That's crimes against humanity on a whole different level. It's, and all of nuclear has is applicable. Was reportedly frustrated by Chancellor, who's now the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, determined who whose wife works for, you know, United Nations for the last fifteen years or something, by the way a very high ranking, determination to scrutinize the cost of nuclear, which delayed the strategy's publication. The scrutiny complete the 24 gigawatt nuclear goal announced in August. He declared himself a strong supporter in August. He was uh, elected prime minister in two months later in October because... 
he declared himself a strong supporter of disease factories. Like that's some serious win we got going on out there, man. Wow. We're going to get a break in the wind for a few days by the looks of it. I want to put the boat in the water one more time. Last night was minus 12, but I got to like to get the boat in the water and see if I can resolve the issue I got. Only one of the UK's existing nuclear reactor and get the mechanic to come down and get on the boat. If if I can get the weather break, it's been nothing but storms. I was sick for like 20 days, and then we had storm after storm. Winter showed up, but I haven't given up. You know me, I don't know how to give up. It's not in my vocabulary or in my option bag. Only one of the UK's existing nuclear reactors, size will be scheduled to continue operation after 2028. So they waited until almost all the reactors are past the embrittlement where they're too dangerous to operate. Before they uh, decide they're going to build reactors, they don't have the manpower, don't have equipment. The EDF has half of their fleet down. They're stumbling from one disaster to the next. And even useful idiots like this are not capable of manifesting reactors at a thin air, the manpower and everything else. Like Hinkley Point, or Sizewell C, rather, the biggest construction operation in human history. The statistics on it are frightening. It's more pollution to build it than you can shake a stick at. I like to add it. Up. I have to add it up one of these days. Like for instance, there's enough cement which is really intensive to pr create. There's enough cement to pave a sidewalk all the way to Rome. The path to net to zero carbon heat. Zero carbon heat. This is a new framing we've been listening to for about a week now. For the Net Zero Infrastructure Industry Coalition, Net Zero Infrastructure Industry Coalition, estimated the full electrification of the UK economy will require 400 gigawatts of total electricity generation. They're only trying to build 24 nuclear to, to keep their nuclear weapons and their genocide machine running in second gear. Hinkley Point C under construction... It's going to be 3.2 gigawatts. So as soon as you take some of the fuel out in 18 months after it's running and put it in a fuel pool, it's a disease factory in overdrive for the next uh, million years. The emissions are constant all day. 8,000 strong workforce. How much pollution do they create e each day? Is being employed to build it. The final construction bill is expected to be $27 billion, which is way over budget and way behind schedule and no end in sight and EDF who's building it can't keep up with their own issues in France and that's their responsibility too. They, they can't even get uh, Finland's reactor which is decade and a half behind schedule four times over budget to even run at full power. Building large-scale nuclear disease factory stations is slow and resource-intensive and expensive. And at that speed, if building new reactors sequentially, the UK complete only three or at most four nuclear disease factories by 2050, falling far short of the 24 gigawatts. The need for speed requires a bigger workforce, perhaps three times the current number of skilled workers that don't exist for this industry and that are chewed up instantly by France's desperation to get their reactors up and running to work on a new nuclear project. The very scale of large nuclear projects is problematic, causing severe distortion, local econ economies, housing, feeding, transportation, entertaining, Supplying vast quantities of construction material, precious metals, water. It's small, beautiful. Small modular reactor technology should have an important role to play in reaching the 24 gigawatt goal. But small modular reactors typically have an output of less than 300. They don't have no output. They don't even exist. There's only one with approval. It's missing over a thousand pieces of the application. Got a rubber stamp. That means nothing. 
and Rolls-Royce is developing a 570 megawatt unit, which is a massive, this is not a small modular reactor, despite the fact that that's, uh, that's the name they're calling it, this is 470 watts. This is friggin' massive. You're not going to build this in a factory and put it on a truck and take it somewhere and assemble it. They don't even have a design application. How are you going to, like, it takes them years and years and years once they get the application to go through it. It's a million something pieces of paper they need. The company's developing small modular reactor design city will be factory built and delivered to sites and plug in modulars. But a 470 megawatt unit is not going to be small. That's is going to be at least half of this creature. They're not going to put that on the factory and ship it out and, and plug and play it. It's a total misrepresentation. Small modular reactors can be installed along existing operational decommissioned nuclear coal foil plants. Now, they only started talking about that because geothermal said they were going to do it. So about a month later, nuclear was like, well, we're, we want to replace it. Regulatory approval and community consent. Community consent. Disease factories could be installed locally to meet industrial or consumer demand without the need for long-distance transmission. But long-distance transmission is fine. They're going to produce 35 times more intermediate-level waste, 30 times more high-level waste and five times more fuel rods because they're so inefficient. And if you look at the studies on it, you can't contain the tritiated water, the radioactive water, which is means all the other isotopes are going to be there too. You, you can't just make the water radioactive. It has to come in contact. Therefore, it's going to be picking up the curium and uranium and everything else. And the designs for the, the non-existent unicorn known as a small modular reactor, offer faster output regulations than larger reactors, but you don't have anything on paper. Making them attractive for balancing variations in wind and solar power production. Uh, of course, they're pretending wind and solar doesn't have storage. There's tons of storage, but they scuttled it. They, they made it impossible. Canada had 4.3 billion with a B, billion dollars last year located for renewables for storage. Bruce Nuclear Power last year took all $4.3 billion for pumped hydro. So renewable had, doesn't, isn't capable of proof of concept because it was got jacked by uh, this. The nuclear power industry controls Canada, runs Canada, captured Canada in the 70s. It's revolting what they actually done. To date, not one small modular reactor has been completed anywhere in the world, so their promise is theoretically theoretical and not proven. You gotta go a long way into the story to get that sentence, right? That should be one of the first sentences. The first time you mention the word small modular reactors, that sentence should have been there. Instead, you got to read through all the vomit to get to something good. you got to stick your arm down in a five-gallon bucket of horse shit to find a little loony or toony or nugget. You appreciate it. You actually said it, which is unusual, really. American regulators approved a small modular reactor designed by New Scale in 2020, and they didn't give them anything else. And the Rolls-Royce design is inching through the process. Inching is the right word. Again, you're talking about over a million pieces of paper. And globally, approving small modular reactor technology is painstaking and slow. In other words, non-existent. And the vision for small modular reactor technology vendors is not to, to be able to supply the same plant globally with multinational approval which is never going to happen because the industry is way too greedy. It'll never happen.
Because he tells so many lies they can't keep them straight. And only with the first power or pressure water reactors, small modular reactor plants have been delivered will true capital and operational costs has been known. And that's 20, 25, 30 years away. But the renewable re renaissance is here. It's in second gear. And by 2026, it's going to curb stomp all the current energy worldwide. Do you think that's going to slow down in 2027? Small modular reactors will not be economic if subject to the same consenting costs as large reactors. Of course it is. It's more expensive. Like a small modular reactor is a fortune. It's just well to build a big one. Neither one of them is going to come to fruition because the industry is just it's 100% posturing and trying to deny you and your planet and your species the future. Finding a publicly acceptable solution with long-term management, a higher activity radioactive waste is still split in the atom, AK. Good progress has been made in Scandinavia. They're going to dig a hole in the ground and put it down there, or they're going to reprocess it in the mixed oxide fuel, which is insidiously, monstrously, hideously evil. Mind-blowingly evil. Because the emissions, because once you take it out of the reactor, it no longer has a containment. It's still splitting the atoms. And so the atoms from the chain, original chain reaction is 2 billion times more toxic than industrial poison. So the atoms, if you put it through a chain reaction again, now you enhance it 2 billion times, 2 billion times more toxic. So when you get those particles in your food or your ear or your water, and you will, you can't avoid it, you can't contain it. In fact, that's one of the biggest issues was what do you do with mixed oxide fuel after it goes through a chain reaction because it's an absurd disease factory forever. What I mean by that is the splitting the atoms, instead of boiling water for a million homes, those same atoms now are released all day into the environment. They never go away. They're cumulative. And it's better to show you a model than it is to sometimes to try to explain it out. So it never goes away. So these these follow particles become more intense, more concentrated, to the point where it'll always be like that. And so this is alphas and betas and neutrons and gammas, and they're pulsing energy almost at the speed of light every second. That's going to heat up the planet. It's going to kill all the bacteria. It's going to kill all the fungus through... And it already basically has. You don't want to add, you know, you don't want to keep pouring gasoline. If your couch catches fire and you got no insurance or anything like that, is your first thought to run out, get a can of gas, and come back and pour it over your, uh, all over your couch to make sure it doesn't go out? Because that's what the nuclear industry does, right? This plume is 19 days. This is symmetrical, covering the entire planet. It's an invisible plume pulsing energy. It's the equivalent of a snowstorm, but you can't see it or smell it or taste it or hear it or feel it or touch it, touch it, pick it up or throw rocks at it. It's important. This is the rule of thumb. And you're going to be born with no thumbs in the near future. The UK is following a community-led approach to agree. But it's a deep geological repository, deep geological repository, a hole in the ground that you're going to cover in, and eventually it's going to leave its containment and it's going to melt down. It's going to consume all the steel and rebar around it. It's going to atomize an air solid and produce all kinds of hydrogen, detonate, make a bigger cavern. It's going to consume all of that, atomize an air solid, ionize and radiate it, and everything that falls down on top of it because it's generating 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Eventually, it's going to have a big hole, sinkhole show up there, and the emissions now will be permanently into the environment worldwide. And you're talking about putting the entire country's inventory, a high-level waste, in the same spot, and that's all going to melt down in the future, right? There's no way to contain it. In the future, it could be 20, 30, 40 years or 100 years, but it's going to happen. It's not going to lose its energy because you put a hole in a hole in the ground 
And the problem with it is, you're splitting atoms into the environment. You don't want to leave it up here. You can't put it in the hole in the ground and walk away because eventually it's going to show back up in a whole different level of evil. That's nuclear. Nuclear is not, it only exists, its entire legacy is predicated upon keeping you incapable of ever hearing this narrative. Very, 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 very few people are going to understand these nuances. And the more you know about it, the more you can protect yourself, the more you know, you know don't eat food from Japan. Don't buy a pencil from Japan. If you accidentally buy it, set it on fire, put it in a video and stick it on YouTube. In fact, probably don't even do that because you're going to liberate the isotopes into the environment. Looking beyond the current generation of pressure water reactors and the near-term delivery of... There is no near-term delivery. There's zero-term delivery. There's no incentive because within the next couple of years... We're going to break the renewable mold permanent, like in the context of where it'll be easy to replace everything with geothermal and renewables. Ideally, you want to use geothermal. And the only, the only problem geothermal got is some places it's got to go down several kilometers. And the technology, they refuse to develop the technology. They got all the universities working on fusion and nuclear and everything else, but nobody's working on geothermal and the independent companies. A quasi energy is a breakaway from MIT. They, they couldn't use MIT, they couldn't stay in MIT and create the technology. They had to break away to create the technology because MIT is pro nuclear, like every other university on the entire planet. And the near-term deliveries of small modular reactors is a complete fable. There's, there's no evidence to suggest that there's a 20-year period where they're going to show up. And which dictates, because of the advances of renewables, tidal energy, for instance, should have been at the forefront, geothermal, they should have got the kinks out of it. It's just an engineering trick. If they get the kinks out of that, then everybody can have geothermal and replace all gas, oil, and coal plant right away. It's stupid simple to build it. And the only trick was how do you get deep enough to tap into the 1,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures because of the brittleness of the drills and everything else that they use for drilling. So they came up with like a laser and would just evaporate the rocks and they get down deep enough and they can tap into it. Problem solved. Build your geothermal, turn the power on there, turn off the gas, oil, coal, or nuclear. That's, a, that's alongside of it. And you got uh, no commodities, f you know. It's so simple, it's so smart, it's so clever. And it's been suppressed. But there are companies out there that have it up and running, right? Countries, every country has geothermal, by the way. And nuclear fusion reactor, but no, no great amount of it. There's been an increase in the United States and Canada in the last year or so. We covered it a few days ago. Supporting research development to the use of spent fuel and separated fission products is new fuel. It's called mixed oxide fuel. It's, it's a completely crime in North America. I need the scumbag French and the lunatic nuclear industry in the United Kingdom and the, the, the degenerate Mayak and a few other small places are doing it, but it's such a such a difficult thing to do. It's so pollutive. You know, like Moltec uh, Canada is planning on doing it. They're from Britain, and they have incredible influences in the Canadian government, and they want to take the fuel, mix, make it into mixed oxide fuel, but they don't got the technology to do it. It's just a handout from the government for Moltecs. Same as Terra Power, same as New Scale, the rest of them. It's just a hand nose. That's all they're really doing. They've been in business for a long time, but they haven't brought anything to fruition. They're not actually even close to anything. They don't have any, any, uh, you know, they don't even have the designs into the regulatory agencies. It's, it's just speculative. If it does take off, they're in a good position. If it doesn't take off, they got a lot of free money from the taxpayers worldwide. 
Viewing nuclear power as a central component of net zero carbon system, but it's not. Right? They're trying to pretend that it is, but it's actually not. Working alongside renewables, balance the grid. So, like, actually, that's a pretty good article. But they, they waited a long time before they gave you the, the actual backbone of the reality. So was, most people only read the first couple paragraphs. I'm one of the few idiots who will read everything. And oh, but the other guy who wrote it, Jeremy Reeds, is the global nuclear practice lead at Matt McDonald's. And so he didn't have a toy on, so they cut his photo off and expanded it out a little bit and took a screen capture up and put it there. Whereas the other guy had a toy on. I'll get there. That's not the guy. He had a toy on, see? And so they showed all of him. The problem... Problem. Only problem is we we need more people. Being honest, telling the truth, having a real debate. And the nuclear industry is frightened to death of something like that. Nuclear power is finally poised to ramp up again in Japan. And this was Power dot, com or whatever media. The Nippers have been hesitant to re-embrace re nuclear power following, which is the nuclear industry I'm talking about, triple reactor meltdowns, four reactors melted down, and eight fuel pulled pinhead. Nu triple nuclear power reactor meltdowns, which you should have been saying. You notice they'll never say those words. There are indications that the nuclear power could ramp up again in Japan sooner rather than later, but they don't have the manpower, they don't have the infrastructure, they don't have the material at their fingertips. It's a complete misrepresentation of reality. It's completely dishonest assessment, is what you've done there, sir. For the five reactors returned to service since then, the inspections take more than 200 days on average. So when you have an earthquake there, how do you know in, uh, you know, in 20 minutes that there's no damage to the plant? Because the media will come out and instantly say, well, there's no damage at the nearby nuclear power plant. And they can't quantify that assertion because it takes a long time to cover that whole site. Examples of aging... Pressure vessel in brittlement. Pressure vessel. So you're down to 1,000 psi, 2,000 psi. That becomes brittle, brittled. Very fragile because of neutron, gamma shines, x-ray bombardments. So you got something at 1,000, 2,000 psi, and it's brittle. You shouldn't take a chance and run that. You have an earthquake. It's running. You get a crack in it. Now you're under 1,000 psi, and you go pop. Do you ever blow up a tire? You ever go and watch videos of tires blowing up at 50 or 60 PSI and think about what a big tire at 1,000 PSI is going to look like. Corrosions and cement strength deterioration. Like the containment and the cement, the concrete, is from the neutron bombardment. It's not contained to the reactor. The whole site is like that. By the way, a promising sign for nuclear power in the United Kingdom. Really? Somebody playing with a robot is a promising sign? He's a senior research fellow for the Energy Environmental Policy at the Despicable and Disgusting and Revolting Heritage Foundation. These are monsters. Is the nuclear renaissance real this time around? Rolls-Royce is in early talks with uh, the biggest chemical factory in Scotland. But they don't have a reactor. Just because they're in talk, that, that's, meant, that's speculation. It's meant to try to make the stocks go up. It's completely dishonest to do something like that. 
Unlike most renewable sources, nuclear produces power 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Unlike most new renewable... So, like, this, this is a straw man argument. Geothermal is 24 hours a day. Tidal energy is 24 hours a day. And storage for all the other ones would be 24 hours a day, guaranteed. But they scuttle it. And there's so many, there aren't 20 options for storage for renewables. If you use geothermal, this is really simple, right? Geothermal, quasi-energy quasi entered the picture, aims to start repurposing coal and natural gas plants with the technology. It'll happen quickly once we solve the immediate engineering problem of transmitting a clean a beam. It's like a laser beam, but it's not a laser beam. And having it operate at a high energy density. Once they do that, it's go time. You start rebuilding these things and you can just send them all over the world and get busy. Building the geothermal, like countries should go ahead and build a geothermal because the technology is right around the corner to go as deep as you would like. But there's lots of technologies to get you deep. You just got to get that extra distance. Because once it gets so deep, the ground is so hard, allegedly, it's, it's difficult on the drilling rigs, right? So if you, if you already put the infrastructure in place, you will come up with the technology anyway to, to finish the deal. If you don't actually already tap into it. And then don't, it only takes about a year to build a facility. And then we're talking about a large facility, mind you. So you can build a lot quicker if you go smaller. Promises, and you don't need all the precious metals on the planet to do it. You don't need enough cement to make a sidewalk all the way to Rome, like Sizewell and... Uh, a promising sign for nuclear power in the United Kingdom. And like most renewable sources, nuclear produces power 24 hours a day. And so instead of saying, well, renewables can work if you use this, this, and this, and this, they just... <laughs> only nuclear can do the job. And so for that, they, they get an F for being so dishonest and deceptive. Rolls-Royce announced it's going to establish a small modular reactor... But you're talking about 440 megawatts with a $235 million investment. You can't even buy the control panel for these disease factories for $235 million. It'll get, in other words, it'll get you nowhere. This is, this strictly, they were, right, this was, they were fished, this was a fishing expedition to get the government to kick in some money. So the government kicked in $250 million, so half a billion dollars is irrelevant when it comes to nuclear. 90% of it goes to administration. Only 10% of it goes to commodities. The nearly half a billion dollars shows a significant private and public support. Public. You really think the public is emptying out their piggy banks and sending them to the nuclear industry? And in Britain, who hates the population, who removed all restrictions on baby food and children's cereal a couple of years before they removed the restrictions for adults. Try wrapping your mind around that statement. Double dare you. Nonetheless, investing in nuclear makes a lot of stupid sense. It makes no sense. It's unique and underutilized because it's evil and dis disgusting. Not only does it safely and securely produce clean emission freeze, it's hemorrhaging radiation into the environment 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're disease factories, for God's sakes. The fuel pools never stop hem hemorrhaging into the environment. Rolls-Royce believes, if it believed it, it would have got a loan for $10 billion and be in business already, okay? That is going to create 40,000 jobs and exports of $300 billion dollars if that was true, the investors would have been all over it early on, right? The, the new Microsoft, the, the new Apple stocks, they would have been all over it. The reason they're not all over because it's it's a fishing scam expedition is all it is. 
And many and all might argue that we've been down the road before. And it wasn't long ago, similar headlines were popping up claiming the world was on the brink of a nuclear renaissance. And it all fizzled out each and every time. And the Rolls-Royce reactor is not technically a small modular reactor. Why do you wait so long to tell people that anyway? You fill them full of nonsense, and then when you go way down in the story, then you start getting a little tidbits of the truth. That's just evil. Because you can't tell the rest of the story if you tell them the truth right away, see? And it's about half the size, and most people only read the first paragraph. It's about half the size of most reactors operating around the world. So it's not small, it's massive. You're not putting it on the back of a pickup truck. You disgusting lawyers, or a transport truck, or anything else. Other designs being offered, like New Scale, are smaller. Again, New, new Scale doesn't even have the whole application in. Nowhere near it. You got to pass the application, get the kinks out of it, re engineer the whole bloody thing, which is over a million pieces of paper, before you can even consider ordering pieces or, or surveying the land. You got to modify, you got to survey the land, modify the land is usually half a billion dollars. It usually takes three, four, five years. You got to grade the land, you got to put in. There's so many things you got to do before you can even lay a foundation. You got to make sure there's no earthquake zones around you. You got to make sure you got water. The, the list is huge and it's complicated. This is incredibly, it, the whole idea of nuclear is to make sure you can't have a future, deny the future with speculation instead of actual, they're not trying. There's no indication they're even trying, but the media is. The media is doing everything it can, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to convince you not to look memorandums of understandings everywhere. We won't look at anything else. We'll wait for the small modular reactors. We'll wait until the world has blackouts everywhere, and then you can try to blame it on coal, gas, and oil. And you still can't come up with a solution because nuclear takes forever, and renewables is an overdrive. It's an actual overdrive. It's curb stomping the nuclear statistics and every facet of it. Russia's invasion of Ukraine brought greater appreciation for liability that nuclear power brings. What the hell are you talking about? This is a completely fabricated narrative. Russia didn't bring the invasion. Didn't know, there was 59 other conflicts happening at the same time. But the United Nations demanded 195 countries put embargoes and sanctions against the only commodity they got access to, which was instant inflation, which means the United Nations should be disbanded. Obviously, they're not a organization of good. Reactors only need to be refueled every 18 to 24 months. No, every 18 months, you got to take out half the fuel. And that's going to be put into a pond. That pond's going to boil off about 120,000 liters a day. There's 1,000 of these ponds worldwide. And each pond, each liter is trillions of anthropogenic man-made radiation, pulsing energy almost at the speed of light, right, evaporated up the tall stacks and into your environment, which is accumulative. That's how you're heating the planet up. And you're drying out the forests, you're... You're, the forest is not breaking down because you're killing the bacteria and the, fu and, the, and the fungus. And so the foliage doesn't break down. The litter doesn't break down. So when you get lightning strikes or other catalysts, the fires are catastrophic. And the, the earth ain't able to soak up any water because it doesn't have bacteria and fungus to create the e ecosystem for it to soak up the water. And so when you have forest fires, they're devastating. And you're liberating the same radiation now back into the environment. You can't destroy it on top of that, see? It's a one-way, dead-end street for all species. That's what nuclear is. And, and it's already got its teeth into everything, and it's time to stop. Take a, take a fucking breath. Look around. Do you got anything you respect, anything you love, anything you want to have a future? you got to fight nuclear with every breath in your body. 
I'm not saying you're going to be like me. I run, believe it or not, this is an educational program. I know it doesn't seem like that sometimes, probably. This is an educational program meant to enlighten those that have the fortitude to hear out a difficult topic. Lastly, the world is finally waking up to the fatal flaws over reliance on renewables. Right? So you got to demonize. That was a great story for a little bit there. Then you got to go demonize renewables. There's a name for that called prick. So this nuclear renaissance must be real, right? Not necessarily, no. America's nuclear power faces significant regulatory burden, right? So it was probably the editor who put that slur in there, see? Because it's out of place, right? It's not consistent with the rest of the story. That's the editor, right? The, the nuclear industry, they got to ship it away to the nuclear industry. The nuclear industry got to rewrite it, send it back to them if they actually wrote it on their own, which is unusual, but they could have. It's actually unlikely that the guy, the author of that particular story wrote it. So this is probably the lobbyist. Americans' nuclear power faces a significant regulatory burden, so the editors at the paper probably slipped that one in there just to, to get an extra bonus. Nuclear power faces significant regulatory burden. Hurdle, a.k.a. hurdle. The government remains a major obstacle to fixing the system for nuclear waste management on top of that. Really? I never noticed. With reform, the nuclear renaissance has a fighting chance. Without reforms, tough luck. There ain't going to be any reform. Because the system breeds um, arrogance and hubris. So last night I ended on 09 seconds. 13 hours later, I got 6 extra seconds in my video. What's the odds? Oh, seven seconds. After 12 hours, my videos get longer. What do you think they're doing in my video, I wonder? My comments don't show up for 12 hours. What do you think they're doing, I wonder, for 12 hours? I went out and bought uh, two phones and put new cards in it with brand new numbers, Try to start up alternative YouTube channels, and both of them got canceled within two hours. With no name on the channel, is nothing. Go back to the channel and it's gone. You And I, I covered it, right? I, I showed the screenshots of it. You think the industry's, the industry's terrified of the truth? I got a poll, and I got a big poll, I got a big poll. Should humanity make Earth's last stand against the disgusting, despicable, vicious, hateful, genocidal, omnicidal, ruthless nuclear power plant, omnicide. It's an omnicide industry. It attacks and kills and destroys all species. It hates everything, including themselves. France's EDF is running to build new Czech nuclear power is in running with two other nuclear degenerate companies. France can't even get their own reactors up and running. They can't get Finland's reactor up and running. China's reactors after having a meltdown of some of the assemblies that they built. They got Half their fleet is down from neutron embrittlement, bombardment, and they don't have the manpower to fix their own fleet. The United Kingdom's reactors that they're in charge of are um, a decade behind and double or triple budgets with no end in sight. It's complete. And they're so greedy, they actually got to put a bid on something that they can't handle. They, they, can't, they can't cover their own responsibilities. They can't cover their own responsibilities. Candidates from China and Russia were excluded on security grounds. 
China can't build the reactors that it wants to build. Russia's uh, usually only build it in impoverished countries where they got complete control, and they have to fund it. And because of the so-called war, Fedokru Center at the University of Saskatchewan supports small reactor designs plans. This is a creepy fucking story right here. The executive director, I can't even pronounce that, that was a lady who ended up making um, stuff for radiating people in the hospitals. So she's responsible for hundreds of millions of people's deaths at this stage. So they named the center after her, Canadian Center for Nuclear Innovation. Support small reactor plants that don't exist to replace coal or gas. Think about that statement now, all of a sudden starting to show up. And this sack of shit professor right there, this disgusting, despicable Dr. John Root. What a sack of shit lying machine he turned out to be. So I think it's reasonable for Saskatchewan to look at small modular reactors that don't exist instead of geothermal that do. Or other, well, geothermal is the best one. A similar in scale to coal fire generators open possibility gradually phasing in nuclear generators we phase out cold. He's a despicable creature, by the way. Provincial government Saskatchewan Power announced September 22nd 22nd, at the community of Elbow and Estevan are being considered possible sites for the reactors. The final decision in approving the small modular reactor is not expected to be made until 2029. But in nuclear industry, nothing comes in on scale and schedule. They don't have an actual reactor anywhere world, world, worldwide, so it ain't going to be 2029, 2039, 2049. But by then, renewable has curb stomped the industry, and ho hopefully that piece of shit right there too. And that's exactly what he is. He's a piece of shit. He's the very epitome of a piece of shit right there. He's a disgusting lawyer. And anybody who's willing to do what he's doing, you have to wonder what he what his he's done in the past. And it's going to be as criminal as it gets. A major supplier of uranium, but we are the suppliers, said Cook. If small modular reactor technology takes off, but it won't, it'll take off worldwide and everyone will be needing the Saskatchewan uranium, said the sack of shit. So why is he promoting uranium when he's supposed to be um, a bipartisan of it? I think it is fitting Saskatchewan to help pioneer the development of disease factories and participate wholeheartedly in the world's transition to a cleaner energy future, says this disgusting maggot. I can't contain my contempt for this piece of shit at all. Well, the estimate cost of a 300 megawatt reactor could range from 2.2 to 5 billion. The province of Saskatchewan, which is broke, by the way, growth plan projects small rod modular reactors could produce uh, provincial uranium sales to two billion per year. Like you're talking two to five billion for a small reactor of three hundred megawatts, and so he's got stocks in uranium or something. Could generate. Yeah, but you, you, can ex you can postulate anything you want. You can say 100 billion capital or a, bill or a million jobs. You, you can't quantify that. Right? This is strictly meant to mislead investors and coax them into investing in something that don't even exist and won't turn a profit for 30, 40 years. But it won't turn any profits because renewables is stormtrooping the disgusting nuclear industry. And a key consideration for successful deployment of small modular disease factories is the welcome discussion about the safety of nuclear technology. And something the uh, Fido Rook Center is well positioned to play a part of, he claims. 
We must listen. We must be respectful because he knows he's a piece of shit. Knowledge concerns provide facts that you don't have. You got no facts that don't exist. Like if you take the word nuclear and put in geothermal, then you have at least some attributes of a human. You have no attributes of a human. Kind of safety is job one in the nuclear industry. When? Where? I've never found safety in the nuclear industry. I found nothing but an embarrassment to the human species. Every fuel pool is hemorrhaging radiation into the environment. You, all you do is lie and lie and lie and pretend you, somehow you have a moral high ground to the population that doesn't know any better. It's scripted and it's 100% deceptive. 100% dishonest, 100% disingenuous. Like the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission's legacy is hideous. It's monstrous. They should be disbanded and replaced with humans because there ain't neither one there. Small modular reactors are designed to be safer. How do you know that? How do you quantify that? They don't exist. You're selling wolf tickets. One of the key activities of the Fito Rook Center is to advise the public on something that you can't prove exists, that doesn't even exist. Canada's Small Modular Reactor Action Plan. Again, calling for partners among provinces and territories and indigenous people and communities that are impoverished. Power utilities, industries, innovators, laboratories, academics, and civil societies. So what you're hearing is desperation. He's, that call is desperation. That kind of narrative is desperation. That framing is, de is desperation. He's a revolting parasite, that person. The University of Saskatchewan, among more than 100 entities across the country, offer contributions to the Federal Small Modular Reactor Action Plan. Well, why don't you, uh, while you're waiting, why don't you develop some geothermal with all these organizations? The only thing you got to develop is how to dig deep enough. But you're a university, so we can't expect you to do something like that, can we? He's a revolting maggot. So, who was this lady that the institution is named after? She's, the team was the first to ever successfully treat a cancer patient with cobalt-60 radiation therapy. Can you imagine how lethal that was back then? Like, the statement up there is so dishonest in so many ways it shocked me when I seen it today it absolutely shocked me I had to stop I had to close the lid I had to go get a cup of tea and I said wow that's a whole different level of evil to promote this as some kind of savior 45,000 treatments are delivered in over 80 countries every day and you can't treat somebody with radiation. That's proven. It's, let me show you the evidence. I shouldn't have to show any evidence, but you can't educate the population without the evidence. You can't do that. And you can't do that. Hang on, here we go. Three percent efficiency of radiation therapy, chemo, radiation treatment, and cancer cures. Three percent. Conclusion is based on facts collected by worldwide research. The conclusion based on facts collected by worldwide research was published in two thousand four again, and. In time of a five-year survival in adults was estimated to be 2.3% in Australia, 2.1% in the United States. So the conclusion was it's better not to get any treatment at all. 
And by the way, it was discovered the human kidneys are at least 50 times less efficient than animal kidneys at removing plutonium. You can assume that would be true for all the other isotopes too. So the dog studies, all the animals dies in all the dog studies. So the first female member of the Atomic Energy Control Board of Canada. Well, that's not a perfect reason to hate her fucking guts now, isn't it? Don't need another reason besides that one right there to hate her guts. She was an officer at the Order of Canada to try to make her feel good for being a genocide machine, is it? Continues to be governed as a not-for-profit genocide machine, an independent board of directors and a single member, the despicable, disgusting, revolting University of Saskatchewan, folks. Callaway nuclear plant disputing violations. This is just some of the stories we're not going to get to tonight. Major nuclear fusion <laughs> breakthrough. Two years ago, they said they got enough energy back to power. They got more energy than they put in. They said, how much was it? Well, it was enough to power a 9-volt battery, Dana. You sure that wasn't static electricity at 150 million degree Fahrenheit, you piece of shit? The company aims to power the world for millions of years by digging the deepest hole ever. And you can't get a single university to work on that. But Saskatchewan got 100 universities to work on small modular reactors that still don't exist and you don't even have a design here. They'll work day and night to get, to get it through the design, Dana, but they won't come up with 10 minutes a week to work on how to dig the geothermal holes, yeah? Which makes way more sense than trying to design fusions or small modular reactors or anything nuclear, doesn't it? So ultimately, the f the small mo or the geothermal vaporizing enough rocks to create the world's deepest holes and capture geothermal energy on a scale large enough to meet the human energy needs for millions of years. And that gets no love at all. But all the fabled fusions and small modular reactors, we need to throw all the money we got, all the media, to get out and support it. But nobody wants to support geothermal, which is a solution. That's your solution, obviously. It's a real save the planet kind of stuff. MSU at forefront of fusion energy. Again, real save the planet kind of stuff, he said. Just give us everything you got and we'll figure it out. So why not do the same for geothermal while you're waiting? Because you might never get diffusion. Because that's stupid to, to come up with a solution, apparently. That's that's crazy talk, Dana. You're, you're talking about a solution, Dana. That's madness. You can't say that kind of stuff. The, the, the bulletin... Of the atomic scientists, we covered, uh, not last night, but the night before, which got censored. The first two stories were these um, absurd, despicable lawyers, right? Edwin Lyman and Diggs. So Lyman said that uh, Chernobyl was 10 times more radiation fallout than Fukushima. Fukushima was four large reactors, pure uranium plutonium, and eight fuel pools melted down. Why would you want to believe the bulletin of atomic scientists? They, and they got over 70 board members, by the way. They made $34 million last year from donations. They're the two newest, greatest sacks of shit to join the genocide machine. Nuclear Waste Program Employee Spotlight. This is from Sellafield. A hideous place, by the way. Hanford, rather, I'm sorry. The same thing. It's 585 square mile nuclear wasteland. One of the greatest environmental challenges in history. Yeah, really? Have you seen Santa Susana? Have you seen Fukushima? Have you seen what they've done to the Bikini Islands? Over a million square kilometers from 2019 studies, two radioactive to be habitable. 
Major nuclear manufacturing opens in North Wales, creating 200 new jobs. Again, pure posturing, right? Providing equipment to the disease factories. This is a company from out of the country that's seen a way to get in the country and get, and get some contracts and money thrown at them. And they're, they're not going to fix anything. No cost for concern, say Lucy's nuclear power plant to test warning systems. They got 90 sirens up in Florida, right on the peninsula, on the eastern seaboard. Imagine how much, and they got pounded with uh, hurricanes a couple of years ago, right at 165, 170 mile per hour winds. Some serious damage. Who knows? A huge storm surges went through there. Who knows how much radiation got washed out into the ocean there? Sounding of all 90 sirens. You'll never use them if there's a nuclear meltdown or a catastrophic release. And every time you see something from Food Safety Magazine, you know they're up to no good. Countries enhancing food safety with nuclear testing, the IAEA. And they also like to radiate the food before they ship it into your countries. Kill all the useful bacteria in the food. N nuclear is just, every facet of it is, how the fuck did they ever get to that? How did they ever get away with that? So Carolina nuclear plant, under more federal scrutiny after backup generators failed in January. These are stories we're not going to get to tonight because... Uh, we're at the two-hour window at this stage in six minutes. VC summer plant. Their generators were offline, and they claimed it was online. Ah, oh, we're not going to have an accident. It'll be okay. We'll get around to it. Everything we know about Amazon's Follow TV show. Amazon's got a Follow TV show based on long-running Follow video game, but with none of the plots or stories apparently from the video games of diesel punk slash theme punk post nuclear wasteland and right unfortunately I'm going to have to watch it to find out what that propaganda is going to be because that's what it's going to be propaganda they have some greatest latest actors in there to sell the propaganda and manipulate the population probably a guest on the Simpsons United Nations launches a record 51.5 billion emergency funding for ca catastrophes they created. They expect an uh, extra four, almost half a billion people to be starving the next year because of the embargoes they put against Russia, see? That they got 195 countries to participate in without votes or referendums or anything else. Westinghouse brings smart metal recycling and treatment to the United Kingdom. <laughs> they're going to take decommissioning a nuclear reactor and they're just going to melt it, the material down and then just sell it on the open market. Right? No matter how radioactive it is, they're going to claim that's the solution. Yeah, no, that's not evil at all. There they are with their memorandums of understanding. I look like a human, but I'm the furthest thing from it, is what they're saying to the camera. Look at look at Buddy trying to smile. If that don't frighten the shit, imagine somebody doing that to you on a dark alley. They're going to build a first small reactor in Poland in three years. You really? Really? You really think New Scale is going to show up in Poland and build a small modular reactor in three years? <laughs> they don't. They don't even got the design. Is is it just meant to put the industry on a on a pedestal to manipulate the population? Here's my favorite story of the day, and the last one on top of that. Danilov says, which is Ukraine, says that Russia must be destroyed. So it ceased to exist. That's the guy in the middle there. 
She's got a sour puss on it. How's your day, honey? Fuck off. Russia cannot continue to exist within its current borders and possess nuclear weapons because any country in Europe will be under threat. Like, what about America? What about China? What about Israel? What about Pakistan? The same narrative is applicable, isn't it? Considers Russia's President Vladimir Putin, Nazi leader Adolf Hitler, to be Siamese twins because he arranged bombings of peaceful cities. Really? You don't think the United Nations didn't do that? Constantly? Um, Pre-Nagasaki with the League of Nations on top of that? Because if you don't, then you're wrong. But uh, it's, a f it's a fun headline, isn't it? Ukraine, Ukraine is... Would you expect rhetoric like this, right? In fact, uh, Zelensky was saying that he wanted NATO to do a preemptive nuclear strike on Russia before Russia done it to them. And, of course, they gave up their nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Would they have used them? Would Russia have invaded them if they had had nuclear weapons? Is nuclear weapons a solution? No. You just got to get one crazy, and there's too many of them out there. In fact, the drama's all cra crazy. The last one of the night, a company aims to power the world for millions of years by digging the deepest hole. It's called geothermal. It's called geothermal. <sighs> we made it through. <laughs> it's been like freak a tough week, isn't it? To get so much news coming out and the news is specific right it's about promoting small modular reactors everybody probably heard the word small modular reactors this week in five shows this is our fifth show of the week we start on Sundays right so you probably heard small modular reactors probably 600 times this week <laughs> I gotta read it, then I gotta screen capture it, and then I gotta sit there and do a show at night. <laughs> so for me, it's like, ah, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I gotta take a bunch of volume now so I can stop for the weekend. Not that I take volume, I should though. And Doc, I need some volume. How much do you need? A couple of thousand. The hell do you need a couple of thousand? Well, I'm talking about nuclear each day. And it's it's like drinking a hundred cups of coffee a day. Your brain is like somebody's got you by the, the head and they're shaking you all day long. The wind's supposed to come down tonight, but man, I was blowing something fierce to her for the first hour. Little church, church. Where the hell was that picture to? I skipped right through, did I? Let me get that. I get that picture now, cause that bugging me. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Nuclear's not evil. It's way past evil. We gotta come up with another word. There's no word that properly describes how evil nuclear actually is. It's it's on its own friggin' level, right? I apologize everybody could kinda a little swearing there tonight got away from me. That that's normal. When you're doing as many shows as I am. That's the, that's the norm. At some point, it's going to break you, right? How many nervous breakdowns have I had since I started doing this? I wonder. A thousand? Oh, well. Let's check the poll. Let's close the poll down, I guess. Try to wind this show down. Should humanity make 
Earth's last stand against a ruthless, self-destructive nuclear power plant omnicide industry. And you got a stunning 96%? I don't know why anybody would say no. Why would you say no? We appreciate the participation greatly. <sighs> Good night, everybody. I don't know if I got it in me to do a show tonight. <laughs> that was some nasty stuff we had to cover tonight, wasn't it? Yeah, good night, everybody. Hugs for everybody. Have a great night, great weekend. I seen Darlene Parole is during the Darlene. I didn't block you, despite you savaging me there a couple of weeks ago on another site. Only problem I have with you was putting, telling people to go somewhere else at the end of my show. Uh, I don't like that. But the fact that you went out there and you savaged me and I screen captured all of it, I'd rather you didn't come back to my site again. It was a horrific thing to do to me. I didn't do anything to you. And so how many other places have you done that to me, I wonder? I'll dig up the screen captures for everybody on Sunday show. Good night, everybody. Hugs for everybody. Except for Darlene, you piece of shit. And the nuclear industry, of course, which appears to me to be Darlene's from. The way she attacked me, man, was, wow, completely unwarranted. And you lied. I'll show everybody those lies on Sunday. You disgusting piece of shit, do that to me. I work like a dog, you're a piece of shit. Take care, folks. We'll see everybody. On Sunday, when we kick it off again, it all starts again. It all starts again on Sunday. The madness. The frenzy for me starts as soon as the show is over. Back in the hell again. Yeah, I got the screen captures. I got the screen captures. And I, I knew you fucking come back to like a scumbag you were. We'll see everybody on uh, Sunday. Have a great night. Take care, folks.
If you made it this far, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, folks. We'll see everybody on some 